Okay, we are finally ready to begin a project from start to finish. And the first project will be a rotating progress indicator. So as you can see, it's quite simple and nothing too flashy. But it does highlight some very important functionality and use of Flare as an editor. And it will also show you how you can group nodes together and how you can easily achieve animation without making more work for yourself. So essentially, we want to get to the final result in the fastest and quickest and most importantly, the smartest way possible. So to begin, we are gonna select U for the rectangle tool and then drag a rectangle onto the screen and then select that and manually set the width to 600 and the height to five. And then while this is selected, if only one object or shape is selected and we hit the align tools, it will align it to the artboard. So as an example, if we do left align, it will align it to the left of the artboard. And what we want is we want it to be center aligned. Okay, next we're gonna hit O for ellipse and then hold shift and drag a ellipse onto the stage and set the width and the height to 50. And then same thing, we want it to be center aligned. This is all we need for now. We do, however, want to change the look of the ellipse. So we're gonna set a different fill, a bit darker. That's fine. And we're gonna remove the stroke. Okay, and then we want to switch the modes from design to animate. So hit animate. And then you can see I've already played around with the animation timeline and uh, the work area um, where we will be doing our animation. Normally this is set to be at 10 seconds. I have the power of hindsight and I know that the animation will probably be around the five second mark. And I've already zoomed in a bit just so the working area is um, it's a bit more clear what we're doing um, in this duration of time. So we're gonna take the playhead and put it at the very beginning. And what we want to do is we want to animate the ball from the right side of the screen to the left side back to the right and then make a looping animation. So as you can see, auto key is enabled. So if we begin dragging this object on the screen, Flare will automatically add the, the current position or the um, property that changes as you make changes on the stage. So what we want is this to be completely at the right side of this rectangle. So we can do that manually drag it in or alternatively we can just select both and then making sure that the rectangle is a bit more highlighted or the last one selected we're going to do right align and then we're going to move the playhead on by 30 frames and in this case it's 30 seconds as well or no, not 30 seconds uh, just 30 frames sorry uh, half a second and then we want it to now be left aligned and then we're going to move it on to the end so 60 frames or one second and then we want it to be at the exact same point where it started so in this scenario we can just say right align again but normally you'd like to copy the beginning frame and paste it at the end so i'm selecting this frame at the beginning hit con hitting control c and as the player is at the one second mark if we hit control v it will paste what we copied at that location. So now I'm gonna take the working area. This is the working area tool. And I'm just gonna drag it in to be at one second, making sure that repeat is active and hit spacebar to play. And there we have an animation. But as you can see, it doesn't look good. It does not look smooth at all. And this is because we are currently setting these keys to interpolate from one value to the next with a linear motion or a linear key interpolation. So interpolation is that mathematical term to say the value from, or the mathematical equation to go from va one value to the next. So if we put the player at the very beginning and we move one frame at a time, you can see that the movement is exactly the same. If we look at the actual X translation, you can see it increases by about, or decreases at least um, by like 18 every time. I think that would, if my math was correct, but the point is that the movement is very linear and it's the exact same for each frame. We want it to be a bit more natural. In normal animation and in natural movement, movement builds up momentum. It starts off slow and then builds up momentum. And then as it reaches the end, it slows down again. So an interpolation for that is something called easy in and easy out. So 
while all of these keyframes are selected because I want it to be um, applied to all of the keyframes, I'm going to select cubic. And the default interpolation is this easy in and easy out. So as you can see, it starts off slow, builds up momentum, and then slows down. So let's do an example and hit play. And that is a lot smoother than the linear interpolation. Just as a example again, let's go back to linear. And let's go back to cubic. Much better. So important to note that I applied the cubic interpolation for all of the keyframes. If you apply a interpolation for these keyframes, currently only these ones are selected, then the interpolation will be applied from these keyframes up until the next keyframe. And this one is set to cubic as well, but if we set this to linear, it will be linear from this keyframe up until the last one. And the last one doesn't actually matter what we set it to because there are no keys after this um, these last keys on, on the timeline. But later on, we will be expanding the working area and we will be doing additional animation. So just to remember, I'm going to, or just to make sure that I don't forget, I'm going to keep these as cubic for now. Let's see how it does look if it's half cubic and half linear. As you can see, it doesn't, seems a bit jaggy. So let's change this back to cubic. Okay, and that's that for now. In the next video, we will be expanding this and creating more of these, but I'll be showing you a way how we can quickly iterate instead of doing this manually for each individual um, ellipse that we will be animating.